Hi, everybody. This is Uncle Matt on uh, Uncle Matt's D&D Neighborhood. And today, a uh, very special guest with me to introduce Jason Hardy, the uh, the product director for MeWe. Jason, say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. And you've got a lot of uh, fans, by the way, out there in the in, in the chat room because you've made a lot of the gaming community uh, very happy. Um, awesome. By uh, you know, just talking back and forth with people, and, and especially deciding to uh, uh, come on the show and and talk, give us a little bit more detail on MeWe. Um, first of all, to everybody who's watching, my standard shtick of you know, number one, please subscribe to the channel. Um, kind of important for this audience because we're probably going to have some follow-up shows, and it'll notify you. Um, also, I do have a Patreon at Patreon.com/slash Uncle Matt, um, and so please throw a couple of dollars that way. It helps keeps us keep us on the air. Uh, and with that, we're going to uh, move on uh, into the discussion, um, Jason. I guess I do want to say, um, there, if there's anyone who's uh, watching this, first of all, the date uh, is um, October 11th, 2018. If you're watching this two years from now, uh, the information on it is going to be old. Um, and so the questions that I'm asking uh, will probably all have been fixed by that point in time. Uh, so, um, and then the... Uh, the other thing I would like to mention is that the topic that we're talking about here is fairly specific. Um, G+, Google+, Plus is just shut down. There is a very large um, tabletop RPG community that has been on Google+. Plus. Many of them are considering migrating over to MeWe, and Jason's been kind enough to come on the show to, to give us some information about MeWe, tell us where they stand uh, in, in terms of things that gamers have asked for, uh, and to let me uh, you know, ask him some questions uh, that, have, that have been raised. So, um, Jason, I guess, uh, first question, have you played yes. tabletop uh, RPG games? Um, I've seen the movie Dungeons & Dragons, if that counts. But. Okay, that, <laughs> that, that counts somewhat. It's a terrible but movie. I you know. Right, right. Well, I think I could have been in, you know, in my younger days because I actually loved board games, but it was, I had a hard time just even getting my friends to play Risk or Settlers of Catan. But I did have one friend that almost got me into it. There so you go. I, I do appreciate it. And we do have developers. One of our back-end developers plays D&D. &D. Oh, awesome. Okay. That's, uh, that, that you, you will find yourself uh, you know, probably knocking on his door and asking him some questions at some point when <laughs> Absolutely. games come in. Let me give you... Um, just a really, really quick pressy on what we're talking about when I when I say tabletop RPGs, just so that you know um, what Absolutely it is that's, that. that's defining this community. Is that uh, you've got a, a bunch of people sit down around a, a table together. Um, one of them is the person who is describing a world and doing the back and forth. Everybody else has a character. Um, that's like in video games, you probably played a Skyrim or something like that. And um, right. so you've got you know one person might be playing the role of a wizard or fighter or something like that. Uh, each of those players has a character sheet in front of them, which is kind of like a baseball card. It's got stats for their character uh, and information like that. Um, the uh, the game master, who's the person running the game, will say something like, you know, you're coming close to a castle. What do you do? They'll say something like, I'm going to go ahead and scout. Um, they may roll some dice. Then the game master will tell them what they hear uh, or what they see. And then they just keep going back and forth like that. Um, okay. So in a, in a very quick nutshell, that's the game. So as a result of that, we break into what I think, um, based on the panel that I did yesterday, uh, I think we can identify four large groups of people who were using G+, and they have okay. different um, interface requirements um, in terms of what they want to get. And I will run through those. Um, but first of all, uh, let me ask, have you got any... Um, questions um, at the outset that would be helpful for us to answer to you about us. No, you guys are, have been great. I've reached out to some of you already and have asked kind of the questions to kind of get the feel for how you use G plus and what you guys were looking for. So um, I love you guys as a community because you've been super friendly reaching out to me. Like I, I probably got 20 to, to 50 contact requests today from, you know, gamers at, from G plus. So yeah, I mean, our uh, we're in in terms of the uh, tabletop role playing game community, we're several millions, and then uh -huh. out of that, you know, G plus is a, a subset, and you know, D and D is a subset of that. So it goes down smaller, but you know, yeah, it's a it's it's generally a very friendly um, community, and then of course we also have those people uh, like any, <laughs> of course, um, and and you know them and I know them. So anyway. 
so that's who that's sort of who we are and um just to give you the pressy on on where people sort of came down in terms of how thing, how people use it um you've got one set of people who actually play the games using google plus okay um and um, we will get into them later because their set of requirements is radically different from most of the people who are on there to talk about stuff. Okay. Um, the, uh, the second group of people are the ones who uh, like to browse around. Um, they're not putting very much up, but they're making comments. Like, you know, somebody might put something up and they'll say, ooh, nice map, you know, or right. you got your math wrong um, and things like that. So, um, so there's that group also, the people who are more just, you know, browsers of what's going on. Okay. Uh, then to, to begin to get into the... Um, the core people who need certain types of functionality. Um, my guess would be that um, the first one of those is that there are a large number of people who create little pieces of content. And you remember I was saying like the character sheet is kind of like a baseball card. Right. So like, you know, monsters and treasures and things like that also have little sets of stats that you can make up on your own. And a lot of people will post uh, little pieces of creative information, they range between about 200 words to maybe 800 words. Um, they don't do it very frequently. You might have somebody who only does that like once every three weeks, maybe. Okay. Um, and so they're not out there trying to make a name for themselves, but there's an, an awful lot of peer-to-peer -peer communication among those people. Um, and so one of the, th so that, that begins to bring us into some requirements that, um, people had and the first one um, and by far the biggest one that I've heard is the ability to make a public post right and I, I'm happy to touch on that one because I think it's a, a really important one and we actually were building it before you guys came over because you know privacy to us is all about control you know and so it's like you can be as public or as private as you want as long as we're giving you the tools to do that and so you know we'll launch it in a couple of different phases um, but the first launch of public posts will be exactly what you, you're kind of expecting. You can post it so that anyone on MeWe can see it. You can allow or disallow followers. You know, so if you want people to be able to follow your profile, you know, you can do that. Or if you think that's kind of creepy, you can turn that off. Um, we'll also make it so we have a feature there right now because um, most social networks force you to be social with everyone. Um, but with us, if you go to anyone's profile that you're contacts with, you can actually turn off so they can see your timeline posts. So that person, if you, you know, you don't want to share some of that personal stuff, you can do that already. And so like, we're just taking that to the next level. Um, we won't initially launch public posts so that it goes to the whole world, meaning that even non MeWe users can see it. That was one of, uh, one of the follow up questions I was going to ask. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Right. Uh, yeah, and that, that mainly has to do with a couple different things. One is security. You know, as soon as you open up stuff to the world, then it's harder to control. You know, that's why Google just had a data breach is they share data with a lot of people. They, sh they have open APIs. And so, you know, if we have it, so it's all internal, people have to log in and we can monitor bots or people trying to, to steal data, where when you publicly put it out, then it just kind of creates some security issues. And so, you know, I'm not saying that won't be coming out in phase two, but you know, when we launch, it won't be to the whole world. It'll just be to everyone that's in MeWe. Okay, so uh, uh, so another follow-up question. So for example, let's say that I have written up a, uh, a description of a dragon that I want people to see. Right. And um, uh, now I do want, sort of the whole world to see it. So let's say that I put a link to it um, on Twitter or something right. like that. Um, and someone hits that link, are they going to be able, are they going to be, are they going to see a thing that requires them to sign on to me? Yeah, it'll basically be, it'll, it'll say, you know, here, Uncle Matt made a post on MeWe, you know, to see it, log in or sign up. And then they can log okay. in and take them right to that. Okay. So I would say first off, um, that is going to be a major issue for a lot of people because okay. what people would do um, is they would put their little things. I mean, kind of like Instagram, you know, whatever it is, they'd put their thing on Google and then refer people from the outside to come in and look at it. And obviously, um, you know, as anyone knows, you hit a thing that says makes you sign in half the time. You're <laughs> just going to be like, fuck it. I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, right. So that, so that I would say would be uh, one of the things to um, consider that it will um, divert a lot of people from MeWe if they don't have the ability uh, to use it as a 
uh, an outward bound sharing site. It's okay. one of the things that a lot of people want to do. And um, good to know. Okay. Um, and you see the, the, the sort of activity that I'm, that I'm talking about that, you know, people. Sure, absolutely. It, it's always that, that balance of, you know, when you open that up and what that can do versus having that control. And so we just want to make sure we do it right. Sure. And you guys are, are at the, still at the, at the relatively early phases of building out the, the platform itself, right? I mean, how long have you guys been around? And it's more than two years, but. Uh, we launched in 2016, but we were in beta before that. Okay. And so, yep. Okay. Awesome. So the, um, uh, so that is one of the uh, main things uh, that I had. Now, and here's another question. Um, let's say that the thing I've written up, again, my example, Dragon. Um, right. Let's say that I'm a person on there who wants to see descri descriptions of dragons, and, and so I right. want to search for it. And I, it, it, am I going to be able to find stuff that's out there if I'm not already um, friended or uh, con on the contact list of the person who wrote the thing I'm looking for. Yes, so we will index the, the public posts so that those can be found in search, um, as well as right now, even our, our open groups, that's 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 hidden, we'll make that available as well, since you know they're, they're open, they should be searchable. You know, because right now we, we definitely have a few, we, we started maybe a little too constrictive, but we wanna, you know, build out and make sure that we're, we're just making it very clear to what people can see and what people can't see. Sure. Um, okay, so that's uh, so that sounds like in many ways it's an easy fix because your open groups uh, right. right now could be indexed. Okay, awesome, because um, because that's going to be one of the things also. Um, the uh, so another question that a lot of people ask, and I think you actually have an answer to this one because I saw it posted <laughs> earlier, uh, but I'm going to ask it anyway so that you go can ahead, go it ahead, however you want to. Uh, and, and, and that is uh, how uh, right now there is not the ability to provide attribution to a shared post. So if someone shares my dragon, it looks like they wrote it instead of me. Yes, yes. And I'm embarrassed being the product director that it still exists like that because yes, it's, 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 it, it is. It is. It, it's like a copy. And, and so that we, you know, we hear you guys loud and clear. I appreciate that you guys send in, you know, a lot of feedback, literally hundreds of feedback come in every day from you guys. And I personally read every one um, because we really want to hear the voice of our, our customers and that's on me. Um, but yeah, so when we, when we launch those public posts, it'll be now when you share it, it'll actually link back to that post and give the attribution to who created it, allowing you, you know, similar to a retweet or a share on Facebook um, because we, we definitely want to help people become viral and known and not look like you're stealing their their ideas or artwork yeah and, and that's the the siloing has been a general uh, concern and that um, so it's um, I have had a couple people describe it as, as asymmetrical um, sharing and I don't know whether that they made that up or whether it's accepted jargon <laughs> but the the, um, the the thought being the ability to see what another person has posted without having to go through the effort of contacting them and especially not having to go through the wait time of having them come back and say, yes, uh, you can see, you know, the stuff that I've, that I've put on. There. That's, that's been a right. And, and that's a big reason why we're launching the, the public post is like right now, if I go click on a stranger's profile, I get the general info, but I don't get to see any posts to see how like-minded they are, what they're doing. Now, if that user is making public posts, when you go to look at their profile, those will all be there as well to just give you that much better general idea. Cause you know, we want to help connect people and that would let you know, Hey, is this person more like-minded like me? So I, I mean I think it's uh, and so what I'm what I'm hearing is that probably uh, one of the central issues this being the the public post thing um, although it um, won't be outbound from MeWe to the extent that people want it is something that you're being able to put in place fairly quickly I think you were saying before the end of the year is that right Yep absolutely okay um, the um, Going on to a few other things. One of the um, things about Google that a lot of people said they liked, and you know, everyone understands that y'all aren't going to be replicating Google, and so we're happy to be in there uh, <laughs> right. saying, "Hey, well, you know what? Okay, so we can't have that, but can we have this?" You know, um, right, right. So uh, one of the things that Google allowed was for the um, poster and the viewer to specify certain people and call out others. Uh, by using a combination of circles and collections. Right. 
And so one of the questions is what is the um, like what is the what is the functionality along those lines at MiWi right now, and what is it envisioned to be? Sure, absolutely, and and it goes in with our our philosophy because we we and that's something I do appreciate about. Google Plus that they tried to make it so that you they understood that in real life you have lots of different circles and you have different personalities and profiles you know and, and we, we try and incorporate that as much as we can in our site for example um, in each group you're a part of you can have a unique profile picture a unique description that only those group members can see um, so that, that's very much our philosophy and so when we roll out public posts we'll also you know we're not going to launch it necessarily with lists or circles we're, we're looking at that but we do have a pretty full plate um, but we'll, we'll create like a, a closer circle so that if you want to create a list of specific contacts so say you have 20 good friends you can add them in that close circle so when you have the option to post you can either do your public post to all your contacts or to your close circle you know that that, that that's what we'll launch with um, you know if the demand keeps up you know if you guys keep coming in and we have millions of Google Plus people that are asking for that we'll, we'll definitely consider expanding that beyond just those three options and then, then as I already as I already mentioned, you can go to somebody's profile and turn off their posts. So then once they, we have the public posts, they're more or less, you make them a follower and they don't even necessarily know that. Right, okay. So, so, so that's in their gang follower. Uh, yes. That, that actually gives you the ability to do um, effectively what's done there. And so for anybody who only had two circles on Google, they're going to be taken care of because you'll have the inner circle, outer circle, and they can just Put people in both. Right, exactly, because we don't want you again in that weird situation where your boss or your grandma joins MeWe and says, "Hey, can we be friends?" And you're like, "Ah, oh, I don't want to be friends because then I have to censor myself." Well, boom, you, you just right. say, "Hey, you can't you can't see my private posts, and I'll accept you." Perfect. Right, Problem no solved. more. Oh man, the boss is on there. No, <laughs> no more drinking pictures. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so um, oh, I do have one very good question being raised by Liz Stewart, which is. Um, how accessible is MeWe for the blind and screen reader software? Yes, um, that is something we can definitely improve on and it's on our list because as I've heard from some people, we haven't done a good job yet with the apps, um, but our developers are aware of that and that is something that we will improve on. And so I do apologize where it's at right now, but we'll definitely get better with it. Okay, all right, great. Um, the, um, but, but, but also the, um, the ability to edit a shared post. We already talked about shared posts, and I think you really answered that one, that you people are not going to be able to edit a shared post in the future. Exactly. It'll, it'll just, they'll see the real post. You'll, you'll have text you can add above it saying, you know, I love this, and then the post is below it, but you won't be able to edit the actual person's posts anymore, which right now, like I said, it's more or less a copy. Okay. Um, let me go to a question now. Um, so you got. There are a lot of people right now who are thinking to themselves, um, "All right, it's a lot of effort to move to a new platform, and sure. so there is there is a, a considerable time investment in doing that." And so um, there are a lot of people who are trying to look forward. So, for example, um, the question of what is y'all's revenue model? Because sure. say that I want to. Um, you know, am I going to be paying, you know, at some point in the future, am I going to be paying a subscription or at some point in the future, am I going to be seeing lots of ads or at some point in the future, is it uh, companies that have pages that are going to be financing the free users? How does that look like it's shaking out right now? Sure. I'd love to talk about our, our business model because it's something that I'm actually really passionate about and why I joined the organization because it's completely different. You know, when you think about the internet as a whole and communication platforms were really in the infancy. And so like Google and Facebook were kind of the, the, the frontiers, but I think they just got something really wrong um, because their whole business model is about basically getting you addicted to spending more and more time on a site so they can show you more and more ads. Um, but we're more in line, more like Apple, you know, even Apple, they just released iOS 12. They have something called, uh, you know, screen time so that I can see, you know, we don't want people to be addicted. We want to enhance your real life. And so our goal is to build something that enhances your 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 life and brings value and if you bring value well, in, our, to somebody, in our case like, it's our imaginary lives we want to enhance yeah, yeah. What, are you, <laughs> well, exactly. what are you doing what are you doing for elves 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, we'll we'll create special elf packages that you can buy. So it's it is the fr the freemium model that can be worked, and there, there's several successful companies even in game. You know, look at Fortnite. The biggest the biggest game success right now is the freemium model. You know, and they're creating you know literally hundreds of millions in revenue. So we'll always have the core features for free, um, and then we've already built the store on the mobile app. So if it's not on desktop, but it will come out on desktop in November. But you can buy you know specific emoji packs. You can buy secret chat. You know, we'll be adding pages will uh, be a paid feature. It'll be $2.99 per month for the page owner. Um, so that does a couple great things. One, it allows um, the riffraff not to create a whole bunch of useless pages. Oh, come and on, so half it, of us are riffraff. <laughs> That is true. That is true, right? Um, but then we also have, you know, so and we have we have storage right now, so that's similar to Dropbox. Everyone gets eight gigs of free storage, and then once you hit that, you either can delete your content or you can buy more storage, you know. And so that's a lot of content, unless you're, you know, so that you some users are kind of scared of that eight gigs. But we're actually compressing your photos, so like you can send about twelve thousand photos before you'll come even close to that eight gig amount. And then text is pretty much infinite. You know, text doesn't take up any storage you know if you do upload a lot of videos all the time you are going to hit that eight gigabit storage but you know again you can upgrade that for free or you can delete those old videos you know so we, we, we're really wanting to build you know features that people love and then add the additional premium ones so that that, that really is that's this the business model that we're built on okay uh, something about that sparked everybody talking about a uh, dark theme and uh <laughs> Uh, and night mode, and I don't even know what the connection. No, no, the is connection there, is, yeah, talk no, to we, talk to that. Actually, we we actually, <laughs> I have it on mine. Um, we we quit. We built a quick beta, and it'll be in the store for ninety nine cents. You know, so it's again. not something. Ninety nine. So, exactly, it's a one time fee. Boom, you get it, and it, and it's not that you know. It's like because and and our users understand we have to make money somehow, and so you know they some people are like, well, I'm used to this for free for this for free. For this for free well you know here we give you everything you need but if you want those little bonus pieces you know that's what keeps the lights on and i and i think everyone understands that in some way uh you know we're getting something for free and some way indirectly we're paying for that whether it's our time spent watching ads and so it's useful to know what is it that we're going to have and so it sounds like there's some micro purchasing uh sure. stuff that's going to be in there okay um and then in addition to that, we, we actually have a whole nother division, MeWe Pro, which is enterprise software um, that generates revenue as well. Because we were able to leverage, you know, the, the code base that we had. And so, you know, so we've got several ways that we're making revenue already. Okay, now that's a perfect way of segueing into my next group of people um, that have okay. certain requirements on uh, that they've been using on G+. Because so far we've talked about just the people who are very much the hobbyists. They're not looking to make a name for themselves. They're just throwing up stuff uh, you know, that, that they've done that's creative. Other people are looking at it. There's right. another whole category of people um, who basically um, they're doing it more frequently. Uh, they are usually putting more time into it. Um, and so you have a group of people, and, and so for example, I'm in this group because I, you know, I can't show a video on uh, Google, and so what I use Google for is to tell people, hey gang, new video out. And then they go outside to a location to see the mm -hmm. video. Same with uh, all of the bloggers, um, and uh, the bloggers are a huge component uh, of the gaming stuff that goes on. And so um, that uh, those people are kind of like, um, cottage industry companies, micro companies. I mean, there's, there is a money component usually, whether it's from uh, people go to my blog and they see ads, uh, whether it's the $16 a month that Facebook pays me, um, you know, for the, for the ad revenue that they get right. on here. Uh, I'm hoping right, right. for $17 soon, <laughs> you know, it's a, uh, um, break so, that limit. I know it. Right. So, yep. uh, yeah, Facebook, uh, the, the concept of a Facebook millionaire. You talk, talk to me about Patreon. Patreon is how you support a Facebook channel, gang. Um, and, and so, go, uh, so yeah, patreon.com slash Uncle Matt. Okay, so there's, you know, I'll, do, I'll do my thing again. Um, yeah. Although the, our relative popularity here, I think if you started a Patreon in the middle of this uh, post, I think you'd make a lot of money. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so the um, so that group, the, the the group of people who are, are tending to do things more more frequently, um, with with more put into it, um, those people, uh, it sounds like. Uh, I mean, first of all, what is it? What would be their ability 
to do that for free? And then mm -hmm. what do they get if they upgrade to the $2.99 a month for the business page? What's the difference between those two? Yeah, for sure. So right now with a group, you know, you can you can only post specifically as a member, you can't post as the page, you know, and then we'll build out features inside the page to help them generate revenue. Cause that's, that's one of the main reasons we're building it is, you know, the biggest pages are on Facebook right now. And, but Facebook is really pissed off their millions and millions of page owners because it used to be that with a page, they'd get a million followers, they'd make a post, a million people would see it. Now on their pages, they make a single post and maybe a fraction, you know, three to three percent see that post. And then Facebook's like, hey, you want the rest of your followers to see it? I know you spent a lot of time and money to get it. Pay us money to the, get to show them. So our big value, our value proposition on our pages is, hey, we show all of your followers the your posts. So that's never taken away, you know, and so that that's what we're doing. And then we'll also look at how can we help them generate revenue as well with their page. Okay, now I'm not, I mean, that that was a good answer, but I'm not sure that I got um, an answer out of it that was, was clear. <laughs> um, so okay. let me see if I understand what you, what you said. The, even a regular page, everybody who has made a connection to me is going to see it, even on a regular uh, page. On a group, yes, absolutely. Okay. So a regular, so on a, on a group. And then, yes. um, uh, is there a difference between a group and an individual? I mean, my little thing on there for Matt Finch, is that a, is that a group? Uh, so we have, right now, we don't have pages. Those are what are launching. Right. So right I'm now sure. you have a group sure. and then you have your timeline where all your contacts are. So those are the two feeds that you have is either all of your groups or you have your timeline feed with all your connections. Okay, so if I'm a blogger, I'm gonna wanna create a group that's basically my blogger fan club, right? Yeah, absolutely. Or okay. or you can create, you know, a page because we'll we'll give you enhanced features there to help monetize your fan club. Since as a blogger, your whole goal is obviously probably to make some money, you know, we'll add tools that are in pages that won't be in groups. Okay, but I can't do it tomorrow because that's not set up yet. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. But okay. it will be that's, just that's all I was trying to nail down was what it, so what yes. we've done right now. Uh, what I would do is I would form a group and then once the functionality yes. becomes uh, for the for the pages, um, that's going to be what the uh, probably what the bloggers want to do at two ninety nine a month as long as it makes sense. A lot of people are not in this to make money. It's just that it's like you know if I'm going to get um, sixteen bucks a month from Facebook from uh, YouTube, then fine. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I'm not going to say no to sixteen bucks, but um, right. I, I'm, I'm not going to jump through hoops for it either. Um, for sure. Okay, so that um, is probably the relevant part of the revenue model. Um, well, and, and you touched on one other thing that I, I, I think I can touch on is like voice and video broadcasting your screen, you know, because right now we do have live voice and live video one to one, you know, um, but we'll look to in the future being able to broadcast to your whole group, you know, and having the ability to share your screen, you know, as like po potential premium features for your group that, you know, for a, a small one time fee that unlocks that for your group. Right. Okay. So you get a a, a sort of a discord simulacrum yes in one as one of the micro purchases okay so people right. basically build their own new exactly really they that. can they can they can put in the things that they want okay um another thing that people have raised now again this is the issue on the um the bloggers and the artists and the cartographers and the people like me on youtube um one of the things that we run into a lot is a problem and this is more of a Facebook issue than it is a, a, a G plus issue, although it does arise on G plus, um, uh -huh. is the fact that when you are wanting to announce something and you have all of these groups out there as well as your own page, um, you have to repost in each one of those different places and half of your audience is going to see that announcement seven times because you put it into a bunch of groups that you share the membership with. And so that's one of the things, that's more where people are saying to themselves, hey, wouldn't it be nice if I could get a thing like that? So I want to put that up in front of you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's always that balance um, because we actually used to have the ability to post to multiple places at once. Um, but as soon as you add that feature, you also open it up to spammers and make it easier for people to spam groups. So it's like, and and so- Yeah, because we'll totally do that. I mean, I'll spam a group <laughs> in a heartbeat. <laughs> Well, right, you know, and, and so like, if it truly is spam, you know, since you have to do it one at a time, it can get caught and stopped. Whereas if you can broadcast and send it to a thousand groups at once, like 
the damage has been done. And so that it's, it's about creating the best experience for everyone, you know, and we found that by limiting that it slows down the ability for someone to spam. Now we've been talking for about a half an hour. And so what we're hitting mm -hmm. is the point at which people have joined in a little bit later uh, and have got questions about stuff that we've already covered. And so I'd like to do just a little bit of a nutshell on here okay. about what we've covered um, for those of you guys who, um, who tuned in late. Um, we have asked the first question about the public post. Uh, and the answer about the public post is that, yes, that's something that's going to be, and correct me if I am if I say something wrong, Jason, but okay. it's, it's going to be available uh, before the end of the year. Um, they're going to have the ability to do a page so that if you are a blogger or somebody who's got an outbound location, um, you're going to be able to do that. And it's going to be based on a micro purchase model uh, sort of setup where you're paying $2.99 a month uh, to do that. On the voice and video, a similar thing. You'll, uh, it's not developed yet, but you'll be able to, um, you know, basically pay for having that one-time fee on something like that. Um, they're going to fix the shared post issue so that it shows, uh, yes. you know, who it who it came from, um, and and won't just be so much of a of a copy on there. Um, we talked about uh, collections and circles, guys, and so that. Um, Jason, if you could uh, just revisit again because it's such a, a, a big issue here. Oh, the, okay. So, and then the one thing that I was that, where I've been real negative and I've scolded Jason about this <laughs> one is the fact that um, right now it's not envisioned uh, that things that we post on uh, MeWe are going to be visible to somebody coming in from a Twitter link or another link from another site without them running into the thing that says, please log into MeWe and you have to know this. Person. So that's been that's been the one thing where I've not been happy with the answer. Um, and then if we could revisit, if you just let people give give people your description again of how the the circles and collections uh, are going to work, the ability of right. people to block out parts of their lives and parts of their audiences. So we did talk about circles. We didn't talk about collections. So I'll, okay. I'll bring that up as well. So with circles, how we're launching with public posts is you'll you'll have really three options. You can you can broadcast your your timeline posts to everyone on MeWe, just your friends, and then you'll also be able to create a, a close friends list. So I can select you know 20, 25 contacts, five contacts, two contacts, and only those close friends will then see that post. So that that's how we're we'll be we'll be launching it. Um, but we'll look at the possibility of either adding lists or adding circles similar in the future, but it definitely won't won't launch with that. And then I when we talk about, about I, did, I did misspeak also when I said that people were coming in, Jeremy Smith is pointing out to me. Um, when I said that people come in, they they wouldn't they wouldn't have to know you if it were a public post. They would simply have to have a MeWe account. So I, I misspoke yes. on that, guys. I was wrong about that. So thank you for pointing that out, Jeremy. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, perfect. And so with collections, you know, what we have right now are hashtags to kind of sort things and filter things. And your community has been great with uh, feedback and actually gave me a really good idea because they're like, yeah, I like hashtags, but they're right now as a, a group owner admin, I can't control what hashtags are. And so like I've already put that on the future doc is like, all right, if I give the user control where they can delete hashtags or limit the hashtags to what the owner wants, then you can create that same kind of collections feels where then I can you can already do this like if you go in MeWe, you go in the group there's a, a list of hashtags that have been used in the group you click on that hashtag it only shows you a feed of posts that have that hashtag well if if we allow you to follow hashtags or unfollow hashtags or you know make that better I think we can really make that work for what the Google Plus community is used to with collections we'll do through hashtags since that system is already in place um. I am looking at a post by Rosen Thorns that I'm not sure uh, exactly what the question is, but the question is, what about communities that can support important causes and passions? Um, I mean, I, I will throw this out there because we, we definitely like, like to support the community. So MeWe Pro is free for nonprofits and uh, educational institutions. So if you want to use that within your organization, we offer that for free because we want to give back to the community. Okay, so that's a great thing. There's, the answer to the question is, uh, you know, get get the MeWe Pro for free, and that's yep. going to be and let us know, and we'll give it to you for free. Okay, um, I have another comment that is a, an important one here from Ashley L, which is the communities need categories to try and sort their posts within them, and that would be, you know, if I want to have one section where I'm talking about dragons, and another section where I'm talking about treasure, and another one where I'm talking about, you know, how players mm -hmm. behave during the game. Uh, is there a way for me to segregate those things so that my viewers know uh, 
how to see the particular post on different topics. Yeah, and so that goes back to hashtags. So I think we, if we, because right now on mobile, they're they're a little bit more hidden, and you don't even have kind of the hashtag field. So I've we've already got some designs um, worked out because instantly I was like, oh, this can be really good for them, and it's good for all of our users is to make hashtags easier to use, easier to sort. So if I want just dragons, it's like I click on the hashtag dragons, I'll only see the posts with that hashtag. Or if I want it, you know, so that enables the user to to really find that and categorize it. And then if we give the owners of the group more control over that, it won't go. Crazy, because that was one of the feedback I got right back. Was like, yeah, hashtags are great, but I had no control over them, and people start making all these crazy hashtags, and then we have a thousand of them, and no one knows what to do. So, um, yeah, because the from from my perspective, remember, I'm I'm like you know two generations uh, older than you, I would say. <laughs> uh, it's it seems to me that and, and, actually, and again, actually, I'll make this point that it, it it's cleaner. Uh, to be able to put up categories for a person mm -hmm. who wants to be able to um, divide up the discussion that way. I mean, if I just say, here are my three categories, that, that's a lot easier than using hashtags, which granted, hashtags let you get a lot more specific, but sometimes you just want to brute force, you know, it's this or this. Right, and so that's why, and again, we're playing with this. I, I'm talking with our, our lead user experience designer, how to do that. So potentially the solution, I'm not gonna say this is what we'll build, is as a group owner, I only allow these three hashtags. And so those are the only hashtags that are allowed to be used in this group. You know, I want you guys to post using one of these three and then it'll automatically get sorted every single time. You know, and so then we, this group now is about these three topics. And if you're not gonna post on that, you know, then don't post. And then it makes it easier for the user. And one user could say, hey, I don't ever wanna see this hashtag, I only want these two. You know, so we, we could build something like that that wouldn't that is we since we already have the technology there, it wouldn't be super difficult. And that's not a fundamental issue about gamers. That I mean, there, we've got two uh, sort of topics here. One of them being what are the bare minimum requirements uh, to bring the gamers in from G plus to MeWe, and then there's another right. one about here's the stuff that would be neat, but you know, I don't. <laughs> I, I think that uh, uh, you know the game the gamers th that are watching this run the age range from 15 you know to 60 basically okay. and so there's there's a lot of different speed of adoption um rates in in that group and and uh, you know like me hashtags mean nothing to me because when i started <laughs> on the on the internet things were just in categories and so you know right right um, Anyway, well, so. and part of that is us making sure we design it so it's easier and different. Um, you know, because like if you go to our desktop right now, you know, you'll instant if you're in a, a group that has hashtags, you know, it'll be much easier than say on Twitter where they are not really kind of going with it. no one really does it how we're doing it. And so we'll definitely want to bridge that gap to make it super user and easy friendly, you know, user friendly. Okay, so let me summarize where I've gotten to in terms of these user groups that I was talking uh -huh. about, which haven't been totally. <laughs> you've got, but you've got, you know, you've got the um, the sporadic posters who just want to put something out there, um, right. and then you've got the people who are um, all the the bloggers and the artists and the cartographers and people like that who are basically all in the same um, uh, user group in terms of the functionality that they're looking at. The only thing that I've seen here. Um, that I think would be a big problem for both of those two groups is that I can't, if, if I want to have my social media presence out on Twitter and Facebook and um, other places, that if I, if I make my actual core post on MeWe, we're going to run into that issue of they have to be on MeWe in order to see it. They can't just. Yeah, no, it's it's that. it's interesting. Actually, when we, we first launched, we used to be integrated so that you could share them to Facebook and Twitter, but they shut off their APIs to us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which I, I can't blame them completely for, but yeah. So, um, I, I have noticed that the uh, uh, the rate of sharing, interestingly, and I, it, it could be a coincidence, but the rate on sharing of my stuff has dropped way, way down from the point that I used the term MeWe to describe this video uh, on Facebook. <laughs> so, you know, I, I wonder whether, you know, some of the gnomes of Zurich or, you know. Uh, I would not be surprised. We, you're not the first to say that. And we've seen it, like, when we first started saying things and we came out, like, we'd get, we had a, a, a blogger write a post about us that just reached hundreds of thousands of people. She wrote another blog, it reached like 3,000 people. And like, it pretty much, we've even heard from some people that Facebook has banned them for sharing me we like in their posts and i was like wow you know so so it's, it's definitely a little crazy out there and that's and that's another reason why we exist and, and actually my story and why i came on to me we was it, I, I joined in 2014 
And it was at the time where Facebook did this big social experiment. They had 700,000 people. They had 350,000 they wanted to show only positive posts, 350,000 only negative posts to see if they could make them happy or sad. But they didn't tell any of them. So they're just doing this big psychological experiment on people and not telling them. And I'm like, wow, they have so much power. This is 2014. I was like, I bet they could influence an election. They can decide, you know, and then boom, they more or less had a huge impact on the election. And yeah. so, you know, with us, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we, we weren't taking that control. You know, we wanted to make sure that the users got to see, see the content. It wasn't manipulated. And so that, that's a, a big uh, difference for us. I'm sorry I went off on that tangent, but <laughs> no, not, not at all. Sorry, I was looking to the side because um, there was a, a an interesting post. Uh, Jim Sketch uh, or Skak, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, was saying we need a conversion guide for if I want to have categories. How do you do that? Do it in hashtags. That's probably not an issue for you, Jason, but that is something that the uh, that the community might want to do. The people who are uh, you know have built up the familiarity with me, we you know one of right. you guys is now responsible. Um, and uh, you, you need to put together that conversion guide because it's a good idea. Um, <laughs> now, another thing that's been raised, and here we get into the more delicate territory, because of the focus on privacy, uh, there are a lot mm -hmm. of people who are worried that you know, you're as assembling Nazis and Klansmen and stuff like that uh, on the site, or that uh, you know, either that you're selling to them or that it's a place where they're going to want to go because of the, of the privacy. And we had, uh, you know, we've had issues like this happen before, um, on Reddit, you know, there was a thing called uh, Gamergate where, you know, people who, uh, they, they were talking about uh, women reporting about games. And so the people who are on Reddit discussing, you know, stuffed rhinoceros collection, collecting, all of a sudden found themselves being painted with this brushstroke, you know, of, uh, you know, your prejudice against women. And um, so how, um, what are, uh, sure. I mean, it's, there's, there's no way of really resolving this into a question for you, I mean, I suppose you know. Are you you know writing letters back and forth to Ku Klux Klan about you know? But uh, you know, what's just, just give us a, give us some sense of, of how uh, Miwi is looking at that stuff. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we did not build Miwi for for that purpose. You know, we built it for good people, and we have a very clear terms of service. So I can you know, if you want to post that link, or I can post the link. So we have allowable content. So it's not just a complete free for all. You know, so like if, if you're inciting violence, you know, you're going to get booted off our site. You know, we, we do delete and ban people off our site, you know, because we're not a place where you can just say whatever you want, you know. Um, but so but we're also not going to censor people just because of their political beliefs, you know, because really that's how I was raised is like you have dialogue like with the other side and you understand people on both sides and give them a voice. It's, again, as long as there's there's a threshold that we didn't design, we're not going to build this platform for people to to gather and go kill people, you know, that's just not acceptable, you know, but we aren't going to be like, no matter what your political belief is or what your, you know, black, red, yellow, purple, you know, wizards or goblins, they're all welcome. Right. And, and I think, you know, our, well, the thing is that our community right now is um, like, I think probably every fan community out there is, is going through uh, the trauma of the split um, between people on on a political basis and you know and discovering that people right. don't you know di you know entirely disagree on fundamental things um so it's it's not so much that i mean there is the issue of you guys doing the, the privacy and who that's going to attract but i mean the problem is already in the gamers going into wherever we go it's so mm -hmm. um you know so it, it's just it, it's a question about the um it's a question that people have raised and so i didn't want it to be an elephant in the room uh, where people feel like this wasn't one of the things, you know, that I asked. Did I duck that? No, question? no. I mean, I, I look on Twitter and it, it's kind of funny because people will say like, you know, oh, Miwi's just this place for Nazis. And it's just like, <laughs> I, I don't think so. Like if, if, if they're coming in and inciting violence and hate speech, they're not going to stay on our platform. And then if you also look just last month, we were the number one downloaded app in Saudi Arabia. You know, so like we're a global company, you know, we're built for the world. And that's, you know, that's what we want is we want to build a communication platform. You yeah, know, you're going so to like, you're gonna find many of us who advocate in favor of wiping out orcs. <laughs> You know, and I'm going to go back and say the same thing to you. Orcs are welcome on our site I'm as long as they're not killing just, people. I'm just saying, <laughs> orcs can't stop them. Um, all right. Um, so uh, now let me go back to one little question that I had when we're talking about sure. the storage limit. 
Um, I think un unless we're doing videos or something like that, um, it, people aren't going to run into an eight gig limit. But um, so if I am posting, if I post every day a picture of a comic book cover that I like and I make up stats for it or whatever it might be. So the storage on those uh, graphics of the comic book ads, that is being counted against an eight gig limit and at some point i'm going to get a notice saying hey you've got to buy more storage for the pictures Correct. is that right right um you know i've been on it four years posted about seven thousand photos and i've used up about 70 percent yeah so I don't it's going to take that. it's going to take most people a lot of years and then even then you know you can you can always go back and delete stuff and it'll clear up that storage um and, it, and it'll be a minimal cost to keep doing it. So it, it's it's not something that's like, oh, you know, I'm hooked for 30 days and now all of a sudden I've got to got to pay for this this platform. You know, we want to make sure that it's something that you can use for a long time without hitting roadblocks. Now, explain to me how it is that MeWe is a better platform than than uh, MySpace. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I think that's easy. You could just join and that'll be obvious. That's the you know. softball. That's the softball question. I figured I'd try it um, in, in case you needed a, a, a break after the, diff, after the more difficult question about the politics. Um, so now let's get to the last group that I was talking about, which is there are some people, and I realized that when I, when I said this, the whole chat room, half the chat room was like, what? Uh, there are a lot of people who actually game on Google+. Plus. Um, mm -hmm. And so here's what that scenario looks like. Um, we, since the actual gaming happens on a tabletop, you've got to be simulating some sort of tabletop. And so a lot of people do that uh, right now on Discord um, mm -hmm. because they've got the very quick back and forth. They've got video and audio on Discord. So that's one way of doing it um, that, uh, you know, right now you guys aren't set up for it. It'll be a micro purchase thing. Those people are probably going to stay on Discord and they're going to just do their talking. You know, over on me, we under, under the way this is set up. Uh, people who want to live stream it, they're generally going over to Twitch to do that. Right. There is a group of people though who want to be able to post um, blocks of text back and forth to each other, which is uh, simply, you know, like the guy saying you're uh, approaching the castle. You see this, this, and this. What do you do? And then the other people may write back. Here's what I want to do. Now those posts. Um, and this is sort of another comment in general about the, the chats is what is the ability to have posts that stay up for a while without being swamped in a chat discussion? I mean, I guess one answer is you only have a few people in the chat for your game. Well, um, there's a couple couple ways to do it um, pretty easily because we, we really looked at two forms of communication. You know, people love chat, so that's why every room ha has chat, which you can turn on or off, because I guess not everyone loves chat. And then you have posts, which are those threaded conversations. So every group comes default with both of those. And so with posts, you can do a couple different things. So one, you can feature a post so that it'll stay on the top, it'll never move. Um, the second one is you actually have control over how your posts move. So you can have it so that you're, if you go to your, your settings, um, there's a settings called feed preferences. And so you can set it so that it's sorted by the newest post or it's sorted by the newest comment. So you can make it so that your posts are bumping up with each new comment to the top, or you can keep it in chronological order. So, you know, that's how our, our posting model works. And then, like I said, you can feature one so that regardless, that one will always stay at the top of the group. And then you can unfeature it when the game's over. Because coming from Google Plus, obviously, this is the group of people who consider Discord to be too fast. Okay. You know, so um, although maybe not during a game, but in general, what people use <laughs> D plus for is posting up a thing for people to look at, you know, over the course of several days, you know, right. whenever, whenever they run across it. So, um, you know, obviously your um, setup is, is, is better for this audience than discords would be. Um, but the, the issue is still there because you're faster right now, or at least it appears to me that you're faster than um, the way that Google Plus operates, where something basically sits there by itself forever and people just comment. So. Okay. Um, yeah, so like I said, you, you could you could set that up so that that post would just stay there um, and wouldn't move and you'd be able to mimic that same experience. So chat room, here's what I've got for you. Somebody who is um, probably younger than me uh, <laughs> needs to make a video of some kind in which some of these things that Jason's talking about are shown on a video or something like that or a guide so that when you say, okay, I want to run this kind of game 
or this make this kind of post, how do I do it? Um, that's y'all's job. I'm just going to pick a name here. Oh, Ashley, it's you. Ashley, you need to Ashley <laughs> help. You need to organize that for me, if you please, um, and uh, and sort of put that together, if you would. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I so, like your delegations. Your skills it, are good. <laughs> delegations really, really useful when you're the only person who can talk on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that um, ask if the my cloud and group file section can be made visible on the app yes so we definitely will do that right now um my cloud is only visible on desktop it's not on the android and ios app but it will be there in the future without a doubt how long um it'll be the beginning of next year it's not going to happen this year because again very few people are even touching that storage or getting close to it. And so we haven't had a, a huge demand for users wanting it on mobile, um, but we'll, we'll definitely add it there. Radtown really wants me to ask how you all felt about everyone suddenly joining at once after the G plus announcement. That must have been a, a hell of a busy day. <laughs> yeah, it, it's always fun. It's like, whoa, we just had a spike. Where'd that come from? Oh, it's it's gamers. Awesome. You know, let's let's meet them. And and so it's it was it was great, you know, and so you're the kind of people we want on our site, you know, because you guys, for the most part, are you know fun people that want to just interact and have fun and not make a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's we're yeah. a group that it's pleasant to make happy because we're out playing, you know. It's it's playtime, sure. yeah, you know. exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, who hates that? Um, so, um, and then I've also got a question: um, Will there be support for switching multiple accounts without logging out? Uh, yes, actually, you know, that that's, again, it's, it's not in our current sprint, but it's, it's in our long production list, you know, to be able to have multiple accounts and, and switch between them if you want to. Hey, Jeremy, I did ask him, uh, I, I think you're saying, please ask again about the files upload section. It's only visible on uh, desktop. And the answer is that yes, they, uh, yes, that's, that is the case. They know that they're going to fix it. And it'll probably be early next year was what he said, right? Correct. Um, okay, cool. Um, I believe we are drawing to the point where most of the major questions have been asked and where I've given you most of the uh, nuggets of information about us that most gamers uh, would want you guys to know. Um, okay. I would love um, at some point in the future to do a follow-up because we've listed a lot of things where the answer was, yes, that's in the pipeline. Um, and and so it's, it's going to be good. It would be great to talk again uh, you know, in a few few weeks or in a, in a month and sort of be like, okay, what have we built here? Because this is the, you know, looking forward is the issue, uh, you know, for us. Right. Um, so I have to, you know, complain uh, the one more time about <laughs> people having to sign into midweek to, to see my dragon stuff. I think, I, I do think that's a, a, a problem. And, uh, you know, so whatever, however y'all want to address that. Fair enough. No, I, I, I appreciate you letting me know, you know, because... Okay. Again, it's, it's about, you know, the more people that want something, the easier it is for us to justify building. Okay. Uh, sorry, the, the, that, once again, I'm distracted by the chat room. No, uh, go ahead. Frostbite, what we're, we're not going to go over the questions again because this is going to be recorded to YouTube. Um, right. So what you'll want to do is you'll just want to, when it finishes processing and shows up, uh, you'll be able to watch it through the beginning. And, we'll, and so we don't, um, I, I don't want us to keep repeating too much uh, what all right. we've done now uh, we do have um, Benny asking and, and Benny is very important um, because the person that's when I, I delegated the issue of keeping track of the questions to Benny uh, and so we've got the question is it possible to be able to mute group chats they get a lot of traffic since they're linked to yes groups. I've absolutely been a problem too. how do you do it so yeah so um, on both mobile and desktop you can just hit hide chat and so then that specific chat will no longer show up in your chat list. It'll only be if you actually go to that group, you'll be able to see it. So just go to the, the, the drop down inside every chat, the, the three little dots and hit hide chat. And then that chat will no longer pop up and you don't have to participate. Because again, it's, it's whether or not you want to. And then also, if you notice when you first join a group, you'll get that option as well. It's like, you want to get notified about every chat and do you want to get notified about posts? So we, we want to make that your choice. So some people miss that when they join and they just hit OK, OK. Um, so look at that setting when you join a group if you're not super into chat. Awesome. OK. Uh, we're going to go ahead then and wrap it up right at this point. And so again, everybody, 
uh, you should be uh, able to watch this. I don't know if there's much of a delay because YouTube does have to process it. Um, but within probably less than an hour, uh, this will show up just like a regular video on YouTube and you'll be able to watch it just like a regular uh, video. So the, if, if you missed part from, from the beginning, you can take a look at it on that. So, all right, um, Jason, thank you so much for coming on. I really, the whole community appreciates the fact that you guys are listening uh, to feedback and very, very much appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. And I think we should end, I, I think it was great how you spent that first minute kind of telling me about your community, how you guys work, what the games look like. Um, I'll share a little bit about our story and why Miwi even exists. Hey, great. Uh, um, so the CEO, Mark Weinstein, is actually one of the founders of social media. Uh, he created a group called Supergroup Super Families in the late 90s, you know, before MySpace, before Facebook. And so like he, he was building social networks before, you know, Mark Zuckerberg was shaving. Um, and now Ow! he ended up, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> So uh, he, he ended up selling that in the, the, in the dot-com boom. He, he sold that off. And then he went on to be a successful author. And he was a, a life coach. And then Mark Zuckerberg said something to him, uh, said something to the world in early uh, 2012, where he said, uh, privacy is a social norm of the past. And that kind of just got him riled up because it was like, no, like, no matter how free you are, there's certain times you want privacy. And we've seen, you know, with the Facebook scandals left and right, you know, what happens when you have such little regard to privacy and what and the dangers of that. And so that's how we we came about. He sold his business. He, he found uh, the co-founder and we launched MeWe to really, you know, come back because he remembers, you know, I had done this. We were on the forefront. And so that, that's kind of our CEO and, and why he came about building it, you know, um, politically, since he brought it up, he is a libertarian. So he's he's very in, into to freedom and privacy. You know, he's been named one of the, the top minds in privacy. Um, Canada's given him award for privacy. So like in regards to this, that's his passion. That's who he is. Um, and so, you know, that we're always looking out for our users. And so. That's who we are as Miwi. Um, I do so, have one thanks more. for having me on it. Yeah, okay. go ahead. I, I just had the one, the one more question. Uh, the group video chat uh, is is something that I neglected to uh, mention because I sort of dismiss, dismissed it by saying, yeah, people are going to go to Discord for that. But uh, and you have already said, you know, that'll be like a, a you know, a one time. Once it's once it's there, it'll be a one time fee, and people will be able to do group chat and video uh -huh. and and stuff like that. So um, that uh, the there's there is the request though uh, that you guys put together that suite of possibilities, um, and that when you do that, uh, the request is please include a dice roller. And what that is is it's a thing okay. where you press a button and you tell it, I want it to roll like a, a six sided die or a twenty sided die, and uh, and it'll it'll show you a random result so we'd like that right. <laughs> fair you know we looked at it and so it definitely you know that could either be something we launch basically and then maybe you know for 99 cents you can buy that and add it to your group you know but we definitely definitely have looked at it and so okay. we, we hear you there and that, that's something and then i, I have to give a, also let you know our developers because uh we're a global company and i have to give a shout out to them because they work so hard and they and they're passionate about what they do because every one of our developers um, has stock options so they they treat it like owners this is our baby we work night and day like and so like i think we even have some that are up right now and, and they work in europe so it's like one o'clock in the morning and they're watching this video because you know they, they, they want to support the community that's moving over because they work so hard at building us. And we're a fun community. We're way more fun. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. You know, I, I learned how to cuss in uh, Elvish language today. And, you know, it was it was it was new See, for me. We can tell you things like that. It's an expansion <laughs> of civilization. to have things like Right, right. <laughs> OK, everybody. Awesome. Well, thank you to, uh, to everyone who's been watching. I do appreciate it. Please, again, subscribe to the channel. There are going to be some more videos on the issue of the uh, of the G plus Exodus for gamers. Um, we do have the point that if any of your developers are actually listening to what you just said, they should get their asses back to work. Yeah, they should. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. All right. Good night, everyone. And no matter what kind of Dungeons and Dragons it is that you play, imagine the hell out of it.